Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at one worked example to show you how to do problems involving charge moving perpendicular to an electric field. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. In our one and only example, it says that the figure below shows the deflecting plates of an inkjet printer. Assume the ink drop to be very small such that gravitational forces may be neglected. An ink drop of mass 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10 kilograms, carrying a charge of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 13 coulombs, enters the deflecting plate system with a speed u of 18 meters per second. The length of the plates is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, and the electric field between the plates is 1.4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. It then says to calculate the vertical deflection y of the drop at the far edge of the plates. So we want to try and determine at this distance here, this small vertical distance y. And the first thing you need to be aware of in these types of questions is that we need to treat this like a projectile problem. So we know we can use vertical so that to try and find the vertical displacement y, but we need to know some other vertical variables first. So let's try and find the vertical acceleration of the particle. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find a. We know that the charge q is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 13 coulombs. We know that the electric field strength E is 1.4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb between the plates, and the mass of the particle is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10 kilograms. So writing down Newton's second law, F equals ma, we can replace the force F with our electric force equation F equals QE. So we can say that QE is equal to ma, since F equals QE. And then we can rearrange for A by dividing both sides by the mass M. So we get A equals QE over M, and substituting in the numbers gives us 1.5 times 10 to the minus 13 times 1.4 times 10 to the 6 divided by 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10. Putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1,615 meters per second squared. Now we still don't have enough vertical information to find the time, but we do know some horizontal information that we can use to find the time. So we can find t from the horizontal motion, since the time for the particle to travel vertically is equal to the time for the particle to travel horizontally. And that's a key rule for projectiles, remember. So considering the horizontal motion, we're going to use SUVAT. So the horizontal displacement S is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. The initial speed U is 18 meters per second. The final speed is something we don't know. The acceleration horizontally is 0 meters per second squared. And the time is what we're trying to find. So I'll put a wee star next to that one. Choosing an equation of motion here that does not have V in it, we can use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Substituting in the numbers, we get... 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 equals 18t plus a half times 0 times t squared. So notice we've got this times by 0 in here, which means we can get rid of this whole term here. So we end up with 18t equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2. I've just swapped the sides there. And then we can divide both sides by 18 to get t on its own. So we get t equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 18 equals 8.9 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. Now we're in the position where we can use vertical SUVAT to determine the vertical deflection. So writing down our vertical information, SUVAT, we have S equals Y, so we're calling the vertical displacement Y in this case. We know the initial vertical speed is 0 meters per second. We don't know what the final speed is. We know the acceleration is 1,615 meters per second squared, which we calculated earlier. And lastly, the time which we've just calculated as well was 8.9 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. So we now need to choose an equation of motion that does not have v in it, just like before. So writing down our equation, we have y equals ut plus a half at squared, just replacing the symbol s with y because that's what we were given in the question. And we can then sub in the numbers to get 0 times 8.9 times 10 to the minus 4 plus a half times 1,615 times 8.9 times 10 to the minus 4 squared. Notice that this term here is 0 times something, so that will just cancel out and we end up with 6.4 times 10 to the minus 4 meters once you put that into your calculator. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.